Throughout the semester, we've explored a variety of concepts to assist us in examining and discussing games and their designs. Some key areas of focus in class have been game mechanics and stories, as well as the interplay between them. Whether this is Max's time traveling power in Life is Strange that allows players to undo previous decisions, Depression's quest denying players the option of choice based off the emotional state of the main character, or the subtle and underlying storytelling in the actions in Universal Paperclips. In this video, I'll be analyzing how game mechanics and story are excellently intertwined together in the game Enter the Gungeon. Enter the Gungeon is an exhilarating 2D pixel art bullet hell roguelike video game that takes players on a journey into the depths of a mysterious and ever-shifting gun-themed dungeon. Developed by Dodge Roll and published by Devolver Digital, this game fuses the adrenaline-pumping intensity of twin-stick shooters with the roguelike mechanics of random generation and permadeath runs. In the Gungeon, players assume the role of one of several diverse, quirky characters, each with their own unique abilities and motivations. Their ultimate goal is to seek out a legendary weapon, a fabled gun, in an attempt to right the wrongs of their previous lives. But standing in their way are waves of relentless enemies, intricate boss battles, and a plethora of cleverly designed firearms, ranging from the deadly to the bizarre. With its challenging gameplay, inventive weaponry, and a healthy dose of humor, Enter the Gungeon provides an addictive and adrenaline-fueled experience that keeps players coming back for more as they dive deeper into the ever-elusive, bolt-filled mystery of the Gungeon. The storytelling in Enter the Gungeon is very passive. As outlined by Domsch, a large part of the presence of narrative in video games is constituted by forms that cannot be interacted with by the player, these being elements such as cutscenes or text entries. When you start the game, the player is greeted with an intro cutscene. These panning shots of old tapestries explain the origin of the Gungeon and, more importantly, its most valuable treasure, the gun that can kill the past. Each character has their own reason for coming to the Gungeon, willing to traverse all its treacherous floors with the hope of changing their past lives. Throughout the Gungeon, the player can meet and talk with a variety of NPCs such as shopkeeps, showmen, and others scouring the depths of the Dungeon. While Dom identifies NPCs as dynamic storytelling due to their elements such as dialogue involving the player, the primary use of these characters is to provide an immediate gameplay change or expand upon the lore of the world. Another way Enter the Gungeon tells its story is through the Ammonomicon, an in-game encyclopedia that acts as a repository of knowledge about the various enemies, weapons, and items the player encounters in the Gungeon. While providing information on gameplay effects, the book also gives descriptions for each item that builds the game's lore and world. From minor ones about previous explorers such as two-shot eras, to major factions and wars in the world settings like the Hegemony of Man, Ten Day War, and the Void Core. Enter the Gungeon is a roguelike game where the player must navigate through five progressively difficult procedurally generated levels, each requiring the player to survive a series of rooms culminating with a boss fight before moving on to the next level. An important distinction is that the game is a roguelite. Every run is, for the most part, entirely independent of each other. No weapon or item the character collects are carried over to the next runs. Once you run out of health, either from enemy bullets, the environment itself, or your own bad decisions, you die. A crosshair aligns with your character, and with a click, you are sent back to the start. However, there's a sense of meta progression, such as getting credits from beating bosses, used to unlock more guns and items, as well as rescuing NPCs that later show up in the main hub and the, in the Gungeon to provide player support. The level of interactivity that Enter the Gungeon offers is immense. As described by Salen and Zimmerman, play implies interactivity. To play a game is to interact with it. More specifically, playing a game means making choices with a game system, designed to support actions and outcomes in a meaningful way. Every action results in a change affecting the overall system. Unlike some games we've played in class, where choices are obvious and time freezes until a decision is made, Enter the Gungeon's space of possibility is full of a constant flow of subtle choices, from micro decisions such as which room should you explore, which enemy should you target, and with what gun, to macro ones like should you open the first floor chest or try to go to the secret floor for potentially greater rewards at a higher risk. When the player finally reaches the end after killing the fifth boss, the gun that can kill the past, our goal is within reach. Just like the rest of the game, you pick it up, you aim, and you fire. And then you're back. Back to the entrance. So far, I've not discussed the structure of the game as a whole. 
Sure, I've talked about the broader story and some of the game mechanics, but not how they're intertwined. Using Shell's idea of interactive storytelling, we can create a model that helps us analyze Enter the Gungeon's narrative. Shell's models consist of strings, non-interactive segments such as cutscenes, and pearls where players are given free movement and control. Plotting this with a typical Gungeon run, we can see the player starts in the breach with a plethora of choices, from which character the player picks to play as, which guns to unlock in the shop for future runs, any modification the player wants on the run, and even talking to NPCs to get a better understanding of the Gungeon and to find potential quests. But to continue the game, the player must enter the first chamber, and in doing so, sets the rest of the game in motion. The first floor, the Keep of the Lead Lord, showcases all the standard components seen in itself and all following floors from a randomized layout, two chest rooms containing one gun and one item, a shopkeep, and a boss room. The player, as described in the mechanics section, is once again given a multitude of subtle choices from which chests to open, paths to take, items to use, etc. But as in the breach, there is a specific set of actions that are needed to continue the run. The player must defeat one of three possible floor-specific bosses and enter the elevator to move on to the next chamber. This repeats with the Gungeon Proper, Black Powder Mine, Hollow, and Forge. They share the same broad elements, although with far more difficult enemies and sinister atmospheres. Finally, at the end of the Forge, the player will always fight the High Dragon, and if successful, they wield a gun that can kill the past, fires it, and then are sent back to the Breach. While the run ends with a victory screen, the story isn't finished. This allows us to add the string back to the beginning. In fact, it allows us to condense this model into this, which may look familiar to the game's prevalent imagery. From the revolver design of both descriptions of the gun that can kill the past, to the front cover of the Ammonomicon, the design of the elevator to the game's separate floors, to even the game's loading screen, it is a linear looping story with seemingly no direct route to achieve each character's desired ending. This is where game mechanics facilitate forwarding the story. Unlike previous floors, the fifth floor has a different shopkeep, Gunsmith, who tells characters and the player that to achieve their goal of going further back in time, they must deliver four items to them over the course of many lifetimes. These items have existed in every generation of the Gungeon, but it's up to the player to find and turn them into the Gunsmith on the final floor. Finally, after repeated loops, when all the items are together, they craft the bullet that can kill the past. Together with the gun that can kill the past, the character once again aims and fires, hoping to be sent out of the Gungeon into the event that led them there in the first place. And it works. Each character's past is a playable event that can be changed for the better, ending on a happy vignette. Except it doesn't. This reality shatters back to the standard ending with the line, you killed the past, the Gungeon still remains. You are trapped within a paradox, a never-ending gun-based hell for all eternity, but now with a new goal, to find the heart of the Gungeon and destroy it, to finally be able to exit the Gungeon. Upon revisiting this game for analysis, I've become aware of the emergent elements that I've created with the game. As discussed in class, emergence is the result in properties that exist only when the constituent parts interact with each other and which they do not have on their own. There are many examples of emergence I can think of which can be divided separately into emergent gameplay and emergent narrative. On the first chamber floor, there's a secret path that lets players into an additional level of the Gungeon. The only way to access this is to activate a switch behind a fireplace that needs to be extinguished. Luckily, a water barrel always spawns in the room or once adjacent to it. Unfortunately, any bullet, shot by the player or enemy, that collides with it instantly breaks it. Because of this, I've ingrained in myself an almost unconscious strategy to always angle my character and enemies in ways where neither of us would accidentally break the barrel. As outlined by Bricer, emergent gameplay is where the mechanics afford to the player to create new strategy and utility beyond the original intent or utilization. Another example of this is that no matter the circumstance, I always shoot chests before I open them. Mimic chests exist throughout the Gungeon, posing as normal chests, and will even take your key before springing into action if you're not observant. There's nothing worse than when you're struggling with health only to die by a surprise attack. It's better to shoot every normal chest and waste ammo and time than forget and lose a run. As for Emergent Narrative, nothing encapsulates it better than my absolute hatred for my least favorite boss in the entire game, the Amoconda. The Amoconda is annoying for several reasons. Not only is its attack and movement pattern semi-random, it also has the ability to summon defensive turrets that they can consume to replenish their health and increase their speed. However, the most glaring problem is that this boss is part of the second floor boss pool. Bosses on the same floor are much easier to perfect and gain their heart containers in comparison, and during the early game, these can easily dictate the course of the run. 
Even bosses on harder floors are easier to perfect due to their established patterns and the player having more items at their disposal. It's hard to describe what it feels like to play Enter the Gungeon. I've put over 300 hours into the game and I have positive, if a little, mixed feelings about it. I like its fast-paced, roguelite mechanics, fun synergistic gameplay, and beautiful 2D pixel art assets. The amount of choice, while not really affecting the story, makes the gameplay feel great and impactful. The only flaws that I have are personal because I've played so much that the small bits that annoy me are more apparent. Although not required, perfection is highly incentivized, from gaining more in-run currency to increasing your character's amount of heart containers. This, combined with some personal visibility issues with trying to keep track of the position of the player, enemies, and their bullets, can make the game a little annoying to play. However, this does not stop it from being an excellently designed and fun game, which my playtime reflects. Funnily enough, I hadn't really understood the whole scope of the game's narrative before starting this analysis. I remembered elements such as the gun and bullet that can kill the pass, but for the most part, I've been playing for the gameplay alone. As I mentioned before, the storytelling is extremely passive on standard runs, so much so that the subtle storytelling completely passed me until I actively focused on it. I believe Enter the Gungeon is not only an excellent game, but also showcases the potential for interactive narratives in genres not traditionally associated with storytelling. There are so many additional design elements that I have, didn't have time to cover in this video, such as the actual conclusive ending of the game, and if this analysis interests you, it's only $15 on Steam at the time of recording, so go pick it up. The complex method of unlocking additional characters, and the entire character of the resourceful rat, which could take up a whole other video on its own of how they play with the mechanics of the game. This game is wonderful, and hopefully this video inspires you to enter the gungeon.